The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. The average age of a resident of Vancouver is 42.2 years. It's not old, of course, but it's not young either. It means that a significant percentage, 42% of the people who call the city home, are over 45. Younger adults, the people we need right now to keep the city vital, pale in numbers. This is a problem, says Robert Barnard, the founder of Youthful Cities. The vitality of a city is embodied in the young people it attracts to live and work. Now, the key to attracting young people is ensuring cities meet their needs. And today, those needs include, but are not limited to, housing costs, transportation, and values. And in the case of Vancouver, values like a commitment to the environment. According to Barnard, COVID-19 dramatically impacted young adults, and that in turn will compound the already decreasing ratio of working age young people to seniors. The impact of the pandemic also means young people have higher levels of debt and much higher levels of housing insecurity. Youthful Cities has developed a research program called DevLab that examines the current workforce and skill development gaps of 15 to 29 year olds who were impacted by COVID and then how we can meet those needs. I invited Robert Barnard of Youthful Cities to join me for Conversations That Matter about how we encourage young people to work with us in the building of better cities. Robert, welcome. Great to be here. Is it a problem that we're having in Canada right now because getting into our major cities is so expensive that we're, it, it's getting harder and harder to, to attract that youth talent? Yeah, it's definitely seeing lots of migration um, around cities in Canada and part of and the main issue, we're just, as you mentioned at the beginning, we're doing this new research uh, now as part of this DevLab project. And what we're seeing is that affordability is still coming out as the number one issue for for young people and it's uh, contributing to their searching for other options and finding a better place for them to live and work as you said and also play. It's an interesting uh, kind of challenge because you take a look at Toronto, uh, mm -hmm. one of the most expensive cities period mm -hmm. to live in. Vancouver's not very far behind that. And yet this is the place that people want to live because these cities provide opportunities. Yeah. What can you do through youthful cities to help, uh, I guess, smooth the, the entryway into, into uh, these environments? I think, you know, the, the big cities are, and Montreal, we did a study yeah. last year with RBC and we looked at the best cities for young people to work in Canada. And the top city for working was actually Toronto which seems to be a number, uh, number three was Vancouver. for, mm -hmm. And that seems to be at odds at the affordability issue. They, and they were the least affordable places to, to, for, you know, for young people to live. But what we see is that sometimes affordability or lack of affor the cost of living is connected um, to income. So if, if cities can pay young people a lot, they can compensate for the fact that they're more expensive. You've got problems across Canada where lots of cities are not paying young people enough and therefore the cost of living is just through the roof. So that's the, from an affordability standpoint, that's what we need to do is we need to obviously pay them more and, and keep, keep those costs down. And the biggest cost they have, of course, is housing, as, as, as you mentioned. So that's one of the challenges that we're focused on. So young people, however, mm -hmm. uh, can be quite creative. And their requirement for the ideal home seems to have a much lower threshold than, <laughs> let's say, their parents. Um, and yeah. so do we need to work with city planners to say, come up with models that can accommodate, you know, two, three, four, five different people living in a space that typically you might have said, you know, a maximum of two people living there? Yeah, I think, it, and we look internationally, Youthful Cities has been doing work in cities around the world, and, and there's so many great models, and, and I think young people are amongst the most mobile and uh, flexible populations that cities have, so they're up for those new models. They're up for, if it's going to save them money and help them 
save to you know buy a house if that's what they choose that's what they're looking for right now they generally want to live closer to work which means downtown and so options that are bringing young people together increasing density revitalizing those downtowns those are the housing ideas that i think are going to really rise to the top for young people in a time where we need all kinds of new ideas for housing well, when I was looking at your research, I found it quite interesting how important it was for people in this age group to be able to walk. Because one mm -hmm. of the things that I noted is the, the, the percentage of population that has a driver's license within that group is nowhere near what it was when, no. when we came of age. Yeah, it's, I think it's just over 50 or 60 percent, and it, and it was up at uh, you know, 70 or 80 percent only a you know, generation or two ago. So um, part of it is cost. So cost of, of driving is, is obviously higher. And also just the, the sense that there are more and more urban populations as we move through the generations. This generation is the most urban generation ever. So they're growing up in cities, they're growing up walking, taking public transit. So they see that as a very important issue, bike lanes, cycling, anything to get them around under their own, <laughs> their own motor as opposed to, um, as opposed to someone else's is, is something they desire. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. So what is it that you are doing to help city planners? Because in some ways you go, well, come on guys, don't you know this already? <laughs> well, I think, you know, for, for city planners, I mean, a lot of them are looking at young people and the need to attract young people. You mentioned the, the as the population ages, we need to have more young people in cities just to keep the, the economies going of cities. So there's now going to be a, a competition for which cities can bring young people in. So that attractiveness, you need to have your cities as attractive places to, to, to bring them in. When we look at youthful cities, you need to make sure that there are, is a great work environment in the cities, that you're providing good um, education and skills development. You're providing good quality jobs that are paying well. You're providing great, um, like a great economy that's gonna have uh, maybe components of the old, but lots of the new economy to bring in those you know, very highly educated young people that we're churning out of schools. I like the way you frame that. There's a competition to attract young people mm -hmm. because uh, we're not over, overflowing with young people. We've seen the falling birth rate in Canada for mm -hmm. sure going back for decades now. Uh, and so it really does become important that uh, cities make this part of their mandate to say, why don't you come and pick the, uh, this place to, to live and work? I, th I think it's, well, and it really crosses the... Um, you know, the age spectrum, like when we talk to people of all ages they, and you ask them, do you want young people to be in your city? They absolutely say yes. Like they, they like the concept, they br like the vitality that young people bring. They like the engagement that young people have. They, they want that, that sense of youthfulness in a city. Mm -hmm. The, you know, it surprises some people that 50 years ago, the average age of Canada was 27 years old. So you think of half, you mentioned off the top, like half of the population being under 27 and half older. A lot of the policies that you think about from 50 years ago were building universities, building education. Opportunity was kind of everywhere. Um, as cities get older, they start struggling with, wh which, with where they want to put their investments. And what we encourage cities to do is to think about if you want to bring young people in, you need to make sure that you're, bring, you're mm -hmm. investing in the things that are going to bring, uh, bring that population in. Well, what about those older people who become NIMBYs and go, well, not in my backyard because I, I want it the way that it was and, and I want to keep it this way. It, I think it's a challenge because yet, you know young people are, are the ones who are going to keep that you know keep taxes down, keep the things that uh, people are often fighting against. Um, they're the ones who are going to bring uh, you know economic resources to the city. So you need to have them here, which means they need to have houses. They can't the the amount of money that young people have to pay for their housing compared to past generations is you know multiple times higher. Uh, even when you factor in inflation, inflation. So, uh, the you know we're just not we're not playing with sort of a fairness uh, that uh, past generations think that we are sometimes. So I, I'd say for those who want to keep everything the way it was, um, that's the opposite of youthfulness. That's atrophy. That's when that's when cities start to fall apart. That's when cities start to lack the resourcefulness to come up with solutions they need to for the future. 
So what are practical ways uh, in which a city like Vancouver can improve its attractiveness? Because on your scale, we're number three in Canada right now. Yeah. And I remember doing an interview with former Premier uh, Glenn Clark when I was asking him, well, what are we doing to attract economic activity? Uh And he looked out the window and he goes, don't need to. (laughs) <laughs> uh, look at how beautiful it is here. But we do need to. And, and, and so what are some of those practical uh, steps that cities can take, especially a city like Vancouver, to attract the people that, as you say, make it vibrant now and mm-hmm. ensure it stays vibrant as we move forward? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the uh, DevLab project that we're working on right now. It's, it's, Dev stands for a, um, you know, a dynamic engage and vital workforce. So the ideas that we're looking at are are really focused on helping to build that you, that workforce in Vancouver and other cities across across Canada. So when you think about a dynamic workforce, what Vancouver needs to do is show that it has a variety of different types of employment and programs and opportunities for young people because there's not one size fits all for young people. They they want that diversity of opportunity. They need to be engaged. You know, one of the challenges cities have is engaging a young population, getting them involved. Um, yes, young people have less experience in being be engaged because they've just been on the planet last, but that doesn't mean they don't want to be. They really do want to be. Mm-hmm. So um, in working with cities, you know, they often, when they talk to us, they say, you know, we'd love to get more of them out in these community meetings, but they just don't show up. Well. Maybe we need to rethink where the community meetings happen, when they happen, how they happen, to make sure that young people are really in integral parts of, of those meetings so that city planners can pass some of the initiatives that they want to do that will, will create more progressive cities. When we think of the vital side, there's a bit of a, um, it's almost like a communication campaign to show how valuable young people are to the economy. Um, that they, they're, they're the ones who are doing a lot of the jobs that are necessary to keep everything moving. That, um, that young people, as, as we've been talking about, that we need them in order just to keep the, the economic engine going. So making sure that people understand that and really are focused on that, I think, is the, is the next part. Wrapping all that around is, is the simple stuff. They need to find cheaper housing. Hmm. Um, they need to get paid more, um, and 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 those two things, and and some of the times that comes with also a good quality job. That's the kind of trifecta of making sure that cities are providing at least those things for for young people, and that's what's you know if they can do that, they're going to be ahead of the other of other cities, not only in Canada but in North America and around the world, because young people want to be here. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. I was struck by the fact that one of the reasons that you say Toronto is the number one city is uh, much more of an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. Why is that important? Because, and I ask this uh, out of like sincere curiosity because I look at so many people Mm. and you talk to them about, well, why don't you go create something? And they're like, are you kidding? And and I and I understand why the the yeah. barriers to doing so are are high. Yeah. But but what is it about that entrepreneurial spirit that is attracting yeah. a certain cohort of young people to Toronto? It's a good, it's a good question. I think you know the sense of entrepreneurship is in, is we believe is inherent in young people. Uh, when we look at the value, I'll just talk more broadly about youthfulness. Uh, maybe the the opposite of atrophy, right? So uh, youthful yeah. youthfulness and and what we've done over the years at youthful cities is to help is to talk to young people to help us define that word. And when we look at youthfulness, we we see people and organizations and cities that are connected, that are curious, that are open, dynamic, um, inventive, and playful. Mm-hmm. And we think of those inventive and playful and you think of dynamism and all those other factors, it, it does start to embody what an entrepreneur needs in order to be successful. And I think young people, uh, because of where they're at in their life, they have a higher tolerance for risk. And if you can support that, that risk with, with great experience and knowledge and openness, I think that's where you start to see the entrepreneurial spirit in cities really start to flourish. 
Well, I also find it interesting that RBC is backing up what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, I go, okay, they're thinking if we're going to get behind this and support these people, mm -hmm. uh, they then start to become uh, the economic drivers absolutely, uh, and pretty quickly. Yeah, and, and RBC made a 10-year commitment to uh, called Future Launch, which is really to focus on um, getting young people to work and to work successfully in Canada and 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 become the economic engine for Canada. So I think, uh, and that's what you know, we worked with them for five years, doing these rankings of cities, but also running summits um, in cities across Canada on how to make cities better places for young people to work. In fact, we have one coming up in January. So well, at the end gee, of January, you for uh, saw my next question <laughs> to say, okay, you've got this summit coming up. Mm -hmm. What? You know what is going to be the focus of that experience, and tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a great. It's really almost a, a week in in Vancouver. We're bringing thirty um, young people in from thirty different cities across Canada, and then we have another thirty from the Lower Mainland in Metro Vancouver. We're going to bring them together for three intensive days, more of a workshop than it is a conference. So what we're the goal of that summit is to, in fact, generate new ideas that will make Vancouver a better place for young people to work. And those ideas can come from either training and skills and, and entrepreneurship, or they can come from equity, diversity, and inclusion. They could come from climate change or uh, travel or, sorry, or uh, transportation or even digital transformation. So we're, we've got a number of topics that, that young people have chosen as the core of what they think is important for a great city to work. Um, and we're bringing all these, this diverse group of young people together to now generate ideas that we're offering to Vancouver uh, to make it a better place for young people to work. And so then what's the carry on after that summit? Because the development yeah. of ideas is one thing. Yes. Manifesting them into reality uh, then becomes the next challenge. And so how does Youthful Cities help to... Yeah. Push those better ideas forward. One of the one of the ways we do that, and and we're hoping to do even more of it, is we've created micro grants. So as these young people come together with their ideas, at the end of the summit, we're going to be giving at least two teams of young people a grant of ten thousand dollars to help them get that idea launched in Vancouver or possibly across Canada. So it's just the start and you know we're hoping to, to bring even more resources. And the money's only one component of it. The other one is the support. So br being able to support those young people for at least three months to help them in that, in that initial part of their journey and then finding community partners to wrap around them to make sure that we can get those ideas off the ground. Well, I think that that's vital because uh, you know the I guess the genesis of an idea is great, mm. but until it, re it meets the harsh reality of life, you're not entirely sure that it's going to work. And, and if it falters a little bit because it's encountered a couple of problems, it's easy for people to step away and go, too risky, I'm going to go get a job. Yeah, that's why it's so important, and we'll have some members of the community involved in this uh, summit as we go so that they're hearing the ideas. We have a, um, we'll have a you know, group at, at the end. We've got a, at least a couple of ministers from the BC government coming in. We've got other other leaders, hopefully from Vancouver as well there and, and, and federally. So they can hear the ideas firsthand and that becomes the support structure. You know, we've also got SFU as, as our um, big, you know, as our university post-secondary partner. So all of those pieces helps us um, make sure that we've got the support around those ideas to make them, you know, give them a good shot. It's incredibly hard to launch an idea. Uh, but if we yeah. don't keep trying, we're never going to get them launched. So it's it's about supporting um, and giving giving them a good chance. Well, because I'm such a fan of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, and the support that's required, uh, I think we also have to give a little bit of a shout out to KPMG because they're stepping up here as well. Mm -hmm. And they bring that kind of business insight that can maybe help somebody avoid early mistakes that so many uh, entrepreneurs yeah. start with. And, 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 and this is where I think, you know, having the idea of, okay, let's do these things to invigorate mm -hmm. youth, but okay, let's not just give them ideas. Let's actually help this yeah. become a reality. That mentorship and guidance and, and, and support is great. And, and what I, we like about the Youthful Cities process is that young people are, are the kind of generators of the initial idea. They take ownership in that idea, but we surround them with the community and that allows the, the ideas to flourish. So it still holds that 
um, kind of genuine value that young people bring to it. But the, the community is really supporting the, the launch of those ideas into the, um, into the city. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. So when did you start Youthful Cities? And it seems like 150 years ago, but <laughs> it's only been yeah. 10. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you started it as an idea and yeah. brought it to here. Where in the next 10 years do you hope for this initiative to be so that we can look back and say, we're making a difference? Yeah, you know, as, as we're talking about, it it has to start to, and we think we're, we're doing that, but it has to make a real impact in the city. It's it's part of it, and this DevLab project allows us to do really fundamental research about cities, about the future of work in cities with young people. But it's actually, DevLab was set up as a research and innovation project. So it's not just the research, it's the applying that research to generating new ideas. So we look 10 years out, one of the models we have at, at Youthful Cities is to have, uh, we call it the one city model. So it, what it allows us to do is have um, a city manager in every city surrounded by a, a small team of young people who are working to execute the, the, the research, the innovation, um, and the action around, uh, around uh, you know, ideas around making cities more youthful places. Um, and that model is supported by a, a, a group of partners who are who are there to help both financially, but also mentoring that core group of young people to carry youthful cities forward. That's the core model in one city. And then we want to do that in multiple cities, both in Canada and around the world, so that we can bring those, um, you know, these ideas, this knowledge about how to make cities more youthful to many cities across the planet. So let's say there's a parent or a grandparent watching this right now because oh. mm, your audience isn't going to be watching this because okay I want my grandchild to get involved in this what process would they go through and what what can they expect will be sort of the initial steps uh, to help them move to become a part of uh, ensuring that our cities are vital and vibrant for younger people yeah well we post every job we've got on uh, on our website as a starting place, so they can find us at youthfulcities.com. Follow us on Instagram; that's another place. There's lots of fun stuff on there. We're doing, we're, you know, today we're doing some polls on housing, for example, to get people's opinions on young people's opinions on on that. I think for broadly, um, if they're if if young people are are interested in getting involved, you know, we're we're obviously trying to meet that that demand wherever we can. DevLab is set up now in four cities across Canada, um, primarily Toronto, Montreal, um, Calgary, and of course, Vancouver. And our very first summit is gonna happen in Vancouver um, coming up at the end of, end of January. And we're doing, we actually have four other um, smaller cities that we're partnered with Tamarack in Institute, which is Moncton, Regina, Whitehorse, and Yellowknife. So you can see that we're starting to get that national, um, that national scope. So if they're interested in getting their uh, you know, favorite young person involved. Um, there's a bunch of different, you know, everything from keeping an eye on our socials to, uh, to potentially getting involved in a, in a local summit or even you know, the jobs that, that will come up in the future. So will this become a, uh, a venue that will facilitate uh, establishing uh, new connections? And building new relationships that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have, especially if you're younger. Yeah, I think you know we look at our our process starts with really collecting great data, and when you in order to do that, it's not just um, not just looking at a, a screen and grabbing a number. It means interviewing young people. It means serving young people. It means um, running you know discussion groups with young people, so we can really learn what's happening with young people in cities. And from the data side, we move to um, telling great stories. We yeah. want to really tell stories about what's happening in cities around around young people and then we gather young people around the data and the story so that's what the summit's about and ultimately it's about action so that 10-year view is can point to all the different things that have happened um, in Vancouver and in Calgary and in Toronto and Montreal and all the other cities across Canada that stemmed from some of the work that we did at Youthful Cities. When we launched our affordability index which was you know two years ago we had the leader of the opposition in Canada um, grab the data that we had we had published and pushed it to 
um, the government and say, we need to do more to make Canada a more affordable place for young people. So those are the kinds of policy changes that mm -hmm. we want to see is, is leaders using our data um, to help to make that change from a policy standpoint. But on the program side, it's inspiring the entrepreneurs. It's inspiring the social entrepreneurs. It's, it's, it's inspiring um, new ideas to happen in cities that makes it a reality beyond just the policy. Well, uh, I agree with you. I think this is uh, uh, vital, uh, uh, vitally important if we want to continue to, uh, to grow and especially create networks for people who are, are just entering the workforce mm -hmm. uh, that have a, a national connection and scope because that is a way that we'll connect people and it's through the connection of people yeah. uh, that we're able to make change. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.